we've got news for having new technology and now look for our movie and TV shows for the higher quality. Conglomerates help with producing the kind of quality media we've got need to over the years. Simply, the smaller companies would go under based on the pure fact we can't meet our quality standards. Investopia.com says diversification results in a reduction of investment risk. This is what conglomerates do for the media industry. They provide us with choices and diversification. So not only are they good for content, conglomerates are a healthy investment. Because you risk your hard-earned dollars down here and put it in, into a sure thing. There are, there are only a few of them, but there are many independent operators for conglomerates. It's like a... This isn't a choice. This is like a dictator deciding uh, well, what we can choose to read. I mean, conglomerates, they have many forms of uh, mass media. Uh, Conglomerates dominate some media by using punches. Conglomerates dominate some media by using unfair practices. In the news industry, these conglomerates don't choose quality, they choose what's what what best suits their own interests. You won't see any news story like um that's like negative about them or goes against what they want. They publicize information selectively to influence the public, which an independent operator would not do. Independent operators report locally. They don't always drop report the truth, I guess, because biases are basically inherent in, in every publication, but there's always more to choose from in regards to public, well, not public, local publications. While conglomerates are more like um, national, like, if you are some uh, some small town in um, Alberta, and instead of having a local newspaper, you just have to choose from conglomerate one or, or, or conglomerate two, which basically every other town in Alberta chooses from. Sorry. Asked to write a blog post on Toronto media because there are so many different outlets for media consumption: TV, radio, newspapers, and the internet. It doesn't really matter if the media is owned by a couple of major corporations. Looking solely at the news, there are many different ways we can get our news that wouldn't directly be associated with big major cor corporations. Um, without the support of media conglomerates, smaller TV shows or businesses could not have survived. Um, or wouldn't have survived. Like, for example, in popular TV shows, Like Game of Thrones versus something that dies out, like Glee. In the fifth season, one of the characters died, and their ratings drops immensely. Whereas Game of Thrones, with the support of ABC, they kept their ratings high, and it's very popular now. Or even within movies. When Disney bought Marvel, um, before Disney bought Marvel, in 2009, 2008, Iron Man aired and begun the whole slew of Avengers movies. But in Iron Man, they made a total box office revenue of $585 million just for the one movie. In 2012, after Disney bought Marvel, the first Avengers movie uh, with a total box office revenue, had, or had a total box office revenue of $1.52 billion. That's a big difference. Because the two companies merged, Marvel's movies have increased in popularity. Um, big companies require a lot of employees and are therefore able to employ a lot of people, which will help um, bring the um, employment rate down. Um, for example, Iron Man 3 had the, one of the highest employee um, count at the 3,300 employees that they needed to work on that film. So even though that's when the economy drops, there might be people that are laid off, it'll just be the people that aren't essential to the production. Another argument that can be made for the, uh, the concentration of the 
media ownership in for conglomerates is that when conglomerates merge or businesses merge into a conglomerate, they give diversification for different outlets of media. Like for example, with Disney, they own Disney mainly because of children's movies. But now that they own Marvel, they can spread out into action movies, and etc. They also own Lucas Arts, which is with popular Star Wars series. So with all of the diversi diversification, people who have invested in Disney have a lower risk of losing their investment in Disney because they um, are so branched out they can, um, if they lose in one, they can gain in one. Okay, you're good. Uh, corporate conglomerates aren't actually a very diverse place. Only about 7% of their licensees and staff is female. So a lot of their perspectives are being covered and the content that they're producing is actually quite sexist, racist, and biased. They also do donate a lot of money to political parties uh, and try to persuade people into voting for a certain party by investing in them, which makes corporate conglomerates a little bit of a double-edged sword. The lack of independence causes the media landscape to shift from taking risks to the pursuit of profit above all else. Like, take for example, the, uh, the unpopular TV series of Firefly, there was just too much risk for for Fox for, for, for them to consider letting it run longer. So it, it, so it was cancelled in, in, in season two, but it's still wildly popular to this day. Um, also having all of these big corporate conglomerates um, producing most of the content, it doesn't give an opportunity for small producers and uh, independent to have a bigger voice and have their views spread out, and those ones are more um, are more open to people's opinions and less biases and showing the realistics of life rather than hiding it behind money and pretty pictures and action films. Conglomerate-owned media, well, mass media, are very mindful of of what their corporate masters want. And again, they're not going to like publicize. Any, any information that the publisher deems not newsworthy, and this could very well be like in, be information regarding the insidious practices or practiced by these conglomerates. Okay, so that's four points on both sides. still depriving actual facts and of uh, varied opinions and still producing uh, content that isn't quite accurate for what like and also with Fox News and other ones just uh, actual facts are being just kind of swept under for biased opinions and corporate pushes for political parties. Um, can I ask you about Inside Out? of what children are watching and seeing, they'll still see those those racial tendencies, even in the new ones. They're, they're getting better with it, but they're also getting sneakier with hiding some of those messaging. Okay. Um, right. Can I take you up about the uh, conglomerates? buying into businesses and sort of taking their views and stuff and sort of pushing them away, making them uh, vote for a certain party political-wise. Conglomerates mostly, um, when they buy, out, buy into smaller businesses, like Disney buying into Marvel, they can 
pool their resources so they can get what they what the people want out into different out to everybody more efficiently. But that's not always the case. What the people want is uh, replaced by what the corporation wants. So that that now independent little that now conglomerate owned publication is now spouting lies from that conglomerate. Um, most most media, like all media, is controlled by what the viewer wants. And when the viewer wants something, the conglomerate produces. If the conglomerate isn't producing what the viewers want, then they're going to go down in ratings, right? They're producing what the view, what they think the viewer wants, uh, when in reality they're producing what they want. There's only nine corporations that are actually controlling them, especially in the United States at least. Um, uh, is really the quality of the content risk worth, uh, worth risking actual fact and being politically correct? Okay. I think people would rather have that than Are you not happy with what you see no. on TV I'm, shows? No, not at all. There's still a lot of stereotyping and bias. There's not enough. Like, just Fresh Off the Boat TV show just came out. That's the first TV show in like 30 years that's related to Asian Americans. And every TV show you watch is just a, a group of white people and maybe like a black person on the side just to make it a little bit diverse. But in reality, they're just stereotyping that person to make them seem like they're from the hood or fresh off the boat. In reality, it's not that way. Okay, but for the average TV show, TV goer who just wants to watch whatever they want to watch, right? If they want to see whatever, like Parks and Recreation, The Office, right? I think we're coming into a, a time and age where we would rather have reality content that's not pushed by political parties or uh, high-end businesses that want to have their opinion pushed on people and influenced on people. I think they'd rather just see quality content in an honest manner. And don't forget, one unprofitable practice that these conglomerates have is, since, like you said, they produce a wide range of you know TV shows, movies, and such, well, these are all put on overpriced TV packages and such, which just makes the viewer just pay way more for what they could have gone for from, from an independent operator for way less. As an independent operator, you have to charge more to keep their cost down. A mega corporation can charge less because they're making so much money. But then when they get bought out and put their ideas into a conglomerate, they don't have full control of their content. Okay. Allowing concentration of ownership allows owners to provide programs to niche markets that oppose to single programmers who have to try to appeal to the masses. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to watch the Real Housewives of every county because that's what gets ratings. I want to have choice in what I watch, and media conglomerates provide that for us. Conglomerates defend their actions by saying that we have more choice than we have before. But since only a few corporations that um, decide what we can choose, how is that really a choice? I mean, that's like a dictator deciding what, what candidates we're allowed to, to vote for. And uh, the loss of independent operators will hurt both the media business and citizen customers. When they disappear, the emphasis drops from producing content to making profits. And when that happens, quality suffers. And local culture suffers, and most of all, democracy suffers. Great debate, you guys.